Fence lines are not only boundaries, they're meant to be barriers to trespassers. But in the case of weed pests, they're not only an ineffective defence, they can be the place where herbicide resistance begins. For many years, on many properties, the systemic herbicide glyphosate has been the chemical of choice for the control of fence line weeds. However, due to the almost exclusive use of this one herbicide, some weeds have developed glyphosate resistance. This table shows the number of sites across the southern and western grain regions where glyphosate-resistant ryegrass has been documented. Fence lines are the most common site. We recognise a lot of growers don't get round to spraying their fence lines till everything else on the farm is done. And we need something that's going to be robust under those circumstances. So that's why we're coming out and spraying these really bad fence lines with chemistry, because we want to know what really works. And the fence line trial work has been running for five years. The project's goal is to increase the number of herbicide options for use on glyphosate resistant ryegrass. Under evaluation are registered chemicals, as well as other compounds currently not registered for this use, but being discussed for future registration. And the best result has come from a chemical with a different mode of action, a contact herbicide. Over the five years, the things that we've discovered is that glyphosate mixtures are generally ineffective. Spray seed can work if you've got low ryegrass populations, but tends to struggle in high ryegrass populations. And of the registered chemistry that we've looked at, two applications of spray seed 14 days apart has been the best treatment in every year. Fence line populations of resistant ryegrass left uncontrolled will inevitably become a source of contamination. This is our trial, it's got glyphosate resistant ryegrass in it. And as you can see, the glyphosate hasn't worked on the ryegrass. But when we turn to alternative herbicides, we can actually get control of that ryegrass. The problem with the glyphosate resistant ryegrass is that that seed will end up in your crop and you'll have glyphosate resistance in your cropped area. So we do need to use alternative methods for managing glyphosate resistant ryegrass on fence lines. And the incidence of in-crop herbicide resistant weeds is on the rise. Across Australia, five weed species have evolved resistance to glyphosate. Annual ryegrass, barnyard grass, liver seed grass, windmill grass and fleabane. In South Australia, several populations of annual ryegrass have been found to have resistance to paraquat. I think grain growers in all regions should be looking at their weed management strategies and in particular they should be looking at where they can take glyphosate use out of their rotation. If they've got a rotation that relies heavily on glyphosate, one of the things we know, that that's a high risk for getting glyphosate resistance. What has the weed research community even more concerned is the development of resistance to pre-emergent herbicides, and in particular trifluralin, which is heavily relied on by wheat and barley growers. This is what led us to look at alternative pre-emergent herbicides, and that research has allowed the introduction of, first of all, box of gold, uh, we did some early work with Box of Gold. Uh, and secondly, with Sakura. We did the first field trials with Sakura in Australia. So what we have now is we have now some Group J and Group K chemistry. However, everything else we're looking at for ryegrass management at the moment is Group J and K chemistry. So whilst we've brought some new herbicides in, we've only brought in two. If growers don't rotate those herbicides, then they're going to end up breaking them. So I think the strategy should be that if trifluralin is still working for you, you should be adopting these new herbicides over at least part of the farm so you can keep trifluralin working. And if trifluralin has already failed, you should get into rotation between your Group J and Group K herbicides and not just rely on one of them for all of your weed control. More pre-emergent herbicides are being evaluated, but won't be available for at least four years. So the recommendation for all grain growers is to rotate the chemicals used to vary the mode of action and adopt an integrated weed management strategy. Whether they uh, collect weed seeds with a chaff cart, whether they buy a seed destructor, uh, whether they uh, fallow or whatever practice that they want to use. But they need to be building that into their rotation because if we don't stop resistant weeds from setting seed, going back into the seed bank, we know that they're going to beat us.